Uh, let me give you an illustration about that. Now, uh, Mrs. McCaslin and myself, when we go on these trips and tours to talk, uh, we often fly. Now, when we mm -hmm. buy our ticket, we don't ask who the co-pilot is or who the pilot is. We don't care. It's a functional thing, and we know that whoever is at the, uh, the saddle of that particular airplane knows what they're doing, otherwise they wouldn't be there. Would you have felt that way in that Air Florida plane recently when those two men made the decision yeah, to take off? That, that was an accident. That was <laughs> an accident. Something happened there. All right. But I suppose when the passengers gathered together to elect somebody to fly that plane, would you get on it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. We'll be back in a moment. I find this a fascinating conversation because I'm sure it, it's one that brings out what you are, two gentlemen who are sitting here, and you really feel self-assured with technology. And I'm probably one of the generation that uh, is not that sure about technology. So I, I, you know, I it poses all these questions in my mind. Is I'm not sure I trust equipment or machines. I, I still feel like I'm going to trust human beings a little bit more. Uh, well, just just check yourself for a minute and see how often every single day you rely on technology. Yeah. Think about this morning when you got up, how cold it was outside, and think how you just turned that thermostat and you got warm. Mm -hmm. Think about how much wood you had to chop. Yeah. And then, then when you, when you, when you uh, your stove, when you turned it on, more wood. And then you use the toaster, or the hair dryer, all of the, your telephone. You rely so much on technology, people don't realize that. It is kind of a whipping boy, though. Well, yeah. they, they made it a whipping boy, but it's the greatest thing that has ever happened to mankind. Mm -hmm. It can take him out of that condition of servitude. It can take him out of the condition of poverty for the first time in human history. But it has to be organized for that purpose. Yeah. Now, you asked a question about an energy certificate. Uh, the energy certificate is the, it will take the place of money. It looks something like a traveler's check. It's identifiable to the individual only. And it has, instead of dollars, it has energy units, the number of energy units available, so that when you pick up something, you, they will deduct the amount of energy that it took to pr produce that from the raw materials of the used form. Now, how will people get their energy certificates? Not like they do today, working. Mm -hmm. They'll get it because of their citizenship, because they're doing so little, and they'll do less. I just picked, read an article the other day about, I believe it was the automobile industry. We're talking about in order to compete with Japan, they're going to have to put in more robots. Mm -hmm. But they said when they do put in more robots, they'll only need a fraction of the workers that they have at the present time. And that always leads to then what happens to these, you know, what's going to happen in the transition period between what we know of as, as using the phrase as jobs and workers, and that phrase that will no longer be applicable in uh, technocracy. What happens to these people now? And I've always heard, you know, and I've been here for the last 20 years hearing that we're going to have more leisure time and more time to do the things we sure. want. But that doesn't, you know, now we see people that are retired saying they want to get back and work. Uh, they want to do yes. things. They don't want to be put aside <laughs> somewhere. And yeah. you and your technology, you're talking about at 45, you're over the hill and out of the game. You know why? Why? Because they've never learned how to live. All they did was to prepare to make a living. And when they're taken out of it, they don't know anything else. That's why they want to go back. Well, this but there are latent possibilities and potentialities in all of us that have never been developed. And when you have the time to develop them, oh, it'll be a new change, a change of mm -hmm. life altogether. But it's the only way out because what we have now at the present time is disintegrating. And we're going to have to go in some direction, and that's the only way we can go. Because we find in the study of nature that everything is unidirectional and irreversible. You've got to go ahead. You can't go back. Mm -hmm. Now we're trying to go back. Mm -hmm. To the good old days. Now you can start a oak tree out of an acorn, but you can't get the oak tree to go back into the acorn. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Yeah. Now, technocracy, as is, is of right now, is talking about mainly the continental part of the United of, of North America. You're not even talking about a worldwide situation. Uh, how, or I'd say uh, Canada and the United States uh, become more of a technocracy, uh, how does that interplay? Because today we're, we're hearing how dependent we are for oil on the Mideast sure. and places like How will we uh, work our energy certificates and, and people that are still living in the situation of prices? And, and Let me pick, How will that interact? Let me pick up that oil. 
just the oil and energy. Okay. We had a, we had a flood recently. The bridge was closed. Mm -hmm. There is no exact figure of the amount of people who couldn't get to work. Now these people, these people who couldn't get to work went into the thousands, but no production was lost because all these people, the majority of people, are in what we call money transfer and paper shuffling. They're not in producing anything. So if, if you get this picture and the amount of people who are engaged in this and merely have them stay home, you're not dependent upon energy no more from the Mideast. And this is the design of technocracy is efficient. Now, let me yeah. bring in one point. Sure. The, uh, Ronald Park, the city manager, about a year ago stated that one-third of the, of the uh, people in Ronald Park go down to Marin County to work. Mm -hmm. Well, figure that out. They go about, oh, round trip, oh, about 70, 80 miles a day. Now, this is not a pleasure trip. Mm -mm. It's not a pleasure trip. It's just a question of poor organization. Look at all that energy that they're burning, mm -hmm. you see, and not enjoying themselves. And so with the design of technocracy is to see that these things don't occur. And then you could solve your energy problem. People are fiercely independent. I, I would think what you're talking about, and one question comes to my mind, is, is what about energy certificates for the people that, that are paper shufflers? How do they get their energy certificate? I mean, we're still going to have, a, I assume, a, the same population. The population is not going to keep growing because of technocracy. We've already got a large population, and already a lot of them are presumed individuals that are not productive in society. Sure. So uh, how, how does the te technocracy society provide for those individuals that, that are not producing and are not burning energy? It provides for everyone regardless of what their status is. In other words, if there's no jobs for them, why should they suffer? You see, and that's what you have today. The minute one is uh, is uh, uh, out of work or unemployed, uh, he's put in a position where he is faced with suffering, mm -hmm. lack of ability to do things, and so forth, because he has lost his employment. But it wasn't his fault, you see. Uh, we've got to think in this way. Instead of a competitive system, one of cooperation, all working together for the same end product, the same desires that all of us have, the production of a high standard of living for everyone. That's all of our desires. And for the first time, you'll think of it differently. Now, we don't think of anything about the air we breathe because it's abundant. There's a lot of it. But believe me, if it was in short supply, it would be the main topic of conversation. Right. You see? Right. Now, when these things become available, they'll take their place just like air does. You don't think of them anymore, unless they get polluted. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're not thinking of it anymore. And it'll straighten out. But uh, that may be desirable. But the point that I want to put over is this, that your present system is disintegrating and it's going to get worse, and it's going to reach a point where something will have to take its place if we're going to survive. Now, we technocrats have no ax to grind. Mm -hmm. We're offering this program. is an informational yeah. option. Right. Okay. Well, on that cheerful note about <laughs> disintegration, we're going to take another break, and then we're going to be back, and when we do, we're going to give you a place where you can talk to these individuals more. Thank you for being with us on Forum 50 today. And we've been visiting about, I think, a fascinating subject, technocracy, because whether I understand it or not, technology is here, and it's, it's provided us with probably one of the best standards of living anywhere. And some of us have been kicking bra and kicking and screaming into the idea. But these two gentlemen have been with an organization that has been saying since 1919 it's the wave of the future. And I would like now, we do have um, an address and a phone number if you are interested that you can contact uh, Mr. Rio McCaslin uh, in San Francisco, or you can call Mr. Uh, John Tobby in Ronard Park. And he's 707-795-8442 uh, in Ronard Park, and it's 3243 Balboa Street, San Francisco. And if you really want an interesting conversation and throw up options, uh, believe me, all the ones you can throw up, they've got answers for. <laughs> well, if, yeah. if those that are interested will get in touch with us, we'll send them the printed material mm -hmm. on the subject that will give them much 
better understanding than we could possibly do in the short time we have here. Now, just and very quickly, because we do have to, we're not talking about an overthrow. You're not talking about oh. political thing. What you're saying is it's going to have to come to the people, and they're going to have to say themselves, you know, that that we tried other options, and it's going to have to be this one. Is that what you're Something saying? Something new is going to have to come forward. May I add one other thought, though, Linda, sure. with the address? That we do have speakers available. <laughs> for engagements to give talks and any university service clubs or any organization and uh, there's no fee involved <laughs> and if they either call the phone number that you gave or they'll write to the address why uh, uh, that we can make arrangements for the for the speaker. And what I think it's very interesting. I, I think it's a fascinating concept and I, I think it's certainly as viable as anything that uh, has been put out politically in the last few years. So I, I just, 